know, like maybe like uh, something more of an elemental force, and uh, some are that are demonic. Now, I, uh, human spirits are not really going to want to contact you because there really is no reason for them to do that. Okay. You have to understand when a spirit contacts you, it falls into the category automatically under a demon because the word demon means knowledge. So anytime you're making contact with something, it already, it doesn't mean, now it doesn't mean that it's wicked, it just the word demon means that knowledge, it's bringing you knowledge. So it falls into a category where now you're making a dialogue. There has to be some type of dialogue, so you're making a connection with this. All right. You see, the mirrors have played this really weird place for me in my life. The house I grew up in, in Medina, Illinois, that, yeah, I used to have a back bedroom, and we'd watch TV back there, and there were two long mirrors. And there were times that I would be, you know, bored during a commercial, and I'd look into the mirror, and sometimes my face would morph, or it would block out completely black. Everything else I could see on the mirror, except for mm-hmm. my face, would just fade to black. Mm-hmm. And that always used to really just freak the hell out of me, Dave, uh, you know, understandably. Any history on the house at all? You know, we really don't know. The family that, that I own, you know, that owned it before us, we I still know a couple of the, the kids and we're friends, and they never complained about it being haunted. But we had weird stuff going on in our house. I mean, even my dad, who's not a, a believer believer, has, has been freaked out at times in, in the place. Well, it may not have been a bad thing. You know, sure. it may have been that when you were looking, it blurred, maybe something was passing by. We always have these, these spirits are constantly transversing past us. Okay. You know, I mean, you, you can have a spirit come by you at any given time. I always believe, have you ever... You know, maybe you're by yourself or you're with someone else, and all of a sudden you get this, shh. it could be even warm outside. And all of a sudden you just feel so cold that your teeth are chattering. You ever right. that? Oh, yeah. You ever felt that? I always believe that there may be, that may be a spiritual type problem where a spirit may have passed close by you. Because it seems to me that all your energy just goes right out of you. Right. So I just, you know, you know back in the old days, uh, back in, like I said before, you know, the medieval days, they would have taken that, I guess, the same way. But I was always in that at belief. But uh, they're always constantly transversing around you. All right. Well, so we, we've kind of talked about mirrors. Now, one of the ways I've heard to kind of protect things, A, you could turn the mirror around. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the things, and, and this has been the deal with the Ouija board that's been brought up to me this week, is covering it with black silk um, to cover the front of the mirror. And now I've been hearing from uh, people that I guess some other radio show had, had interviewed a gentleman who said that, uh, by when you're done using your Ouija board, if you cover it with a black silk uh, sheet or, or cover, that that will keep the energy in its place and it won't traverse or, or bother you. Uh, it also said, and I can't remember which hand off the top of my uh, head, and maybe you know dealing more with the psychic realm, one hand, like our right hand, is for energy out and our left hand is for energy in. That's why you should always use, when you use the Ouija board, if you're going to use it, you should only use the one hand on the Ouija board. On, on the planchette because that is allowing the energy out to move that. But if you're, if you're creating a complete circuit by putting both hands on the Ouija board, that's when you can open up for the dark energies and things to attach to you. So I don't know if you've heard anything about that or know anything about black silk being some kind of magic uh, you know, blanket to keep the, the demons at bay. A black silk to me seems like it had just, you know, well, they put it on mirrors. That's Jewish tradition, so that the spirits don't get trapped. Yeah, I was just thinking the same thing. There is, tr- there are traditions. Uh, the same. Th- I mean, it's the, it follows the same, the same thing. It may be white sheet or a black sheet. It, it, it's a, uh, it's a neutral color. You know, this, this goes back to uh, even the um, uh, colors are very, very important to certain cultures. You know, even the Pennsylvania Dutch. You know, and, and their intricate patterns and whatnot. The colors are actually synonymous of, of, of different types of thought. So I'm putting black or putting white onto something that uh, could be negative. Um, you know, it's, it seems to be that, um, that it would be a traditional way of stopping something flowing through. But, see, my idea about the Ouija board is a little bit different. Okay. Um, and from what I was taught, it's really not the board. <laughs> it's your connection with it. Mm-hmm. So even covering something, in my beliefs, now, anything I say tonight, understand these are just my beliefs. This is just what I'm saying. It doesn't mean a whole hell of nothing. Right. But um, in my beliefs, uh, it's that it, you're making that connection. So when you first make that connection with that spirit, it's kind of you. You're opening yourself up. So you're, it's kind of, uh, you have to give away a little bit of your free will to make a connection with a spiritual entity. So when you do that, it's kind of like opening up the window to Count Dracula. You don't know. It could be, I mean, it could be a, a fluffy elf, <laughs> Or it could be Count Dracula. So you don't know what you're going to get. So that's the, the, uh, the, the most important thing that we have to remember is when we're making contact with the spiritual is that we don't know what we're getting. And it can pose as something else. Now, I just, like I said, that's just my beliefs. You know, everyone has their own way of thinking about it. 
All right. Well, that's good. No, I, I like your insight. I mean, you certainly work on enough of these cases. Uh, now, I don't want to belabor the whole Ouija board case. I just didn't know if you'd heard anything about this black silk deal. And we're going to try to find this guest, and maybe we can have him come on and shed some more light with us. But I want to talk sure. more about your cases. One other thing I'll bring up that I've always thought was kind of freaky was, um, you know, some of the lo- legend and lore with covering the mirrors at night mm-hmm. so that things don't enter. Yeah. The other one that they do, and this will freak out everybody that has kids, uh, dolls. The reason doll's eyes close at night now is because they believe that the spirits can enter the dolls through the eyes or oh. exit the eye- eyes. So what would happen is... Everybody in the land. Right, exactly. So what they believed was that they made the eyes of the dolls that would close oh. at night so that when you'd lay the baby doll, it would close its eyes. The spirits couldn't interject back and forth through our world through the eyes of the doll. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah weird that stuff. Was probably the part of the movie, the Amityville Horror, that scared everybody with the doll with the red eyes. Oh, yeah, you know, all the entire movie freaked me out. What are you talking about? So you were well, seventeen. Was, I mean, the movie was not. I mean, really, right. it, it, it some of the truth, but really, it was Hollywood. Right. You know, it was really unfortunate for Ed Lorraine and and for um, Kathy and George because it really uh, it was kind of sensationalized. And when people were questioning it, it was they were comparing it to the movie, or what was written in the book wasn't even actually uh, very close either. So exactly. I mean, there are, there's a lot of variables in there that uh, it was able to be taken apart, unfortunately. But it was real because, I mean, we had the lie detector tests and everybody passed everything. I mean, right. uh, they said, you know, recently Ralph Pecoraro, Father Ralph Pecoraro, said he never was in there. Well, we have him on videotape stating he was and what he did and what happened to him. So everything that they're saying is not, not true. What, it, the worst part of that was that's incredible. That's incredible. Tried to debunk the whole thing. And right. It's a lousy job. Well, you know, it, I, I don't want to belabor Amityville either. We've beaten that into the ground. We just talked to Lorraine yeah. about it for the first time and the last time that we'll ever do it. One thing that everybody beat me up for not asking was the famous photograph of the little kid. Oh, I just, as a matter of fact, I just uh, gave a copy of that to um, the History Channel, not, actually not too long ago. They used it for the show, the uh, Mystery Quest. Right. Now, the, what can you tell us about that? Is there any, do you have any idea or any info that you can give us on that of who they believe this child to be? Did it actually look like one of the DeFeo children that it was sure shot? It sure did. It, okay. it looked like the youngest brother of the DeFeos. And uh, his face is so, I, I, as a matter of fact, I had come across uh, ghoststudies.com, a very good website. Um, they had done a comparison of the boy's face. That was the first time that I saw the comparison. It, it really does look like him. No, was this a photo that was taken inside the house? Yeah, it was during the investigations. There's okay. a photo. There's a photograph when the house is supposedly empty of the top yeah, of the stairs. George had taken that photograph, and it it appears like there's this little boy peeking out around one of the door frames. Yeah, but his eyes are very reflective, so it's hard to tell if he's wearing glasses in the photo. I don't know. It's just it's a weird photograph. Hmm. If you if you Google little, little boy strange. ghost, yeah, Amityville, you'll find a picture. I'll try to find it during the break here. Yeah, but so you're 17, and you decide, hey, demonology, that's the way I want to go. Well, actually, what happened was, around the age of I was 13 years old, I saw an ad in the paper for Ed Lorraine Warren to speak at Lyman Hall. I convinced my parents to go. My father really was not into this. He's a very, very religious man. And he, you know, he more, more, more would rather stay away from the subject matter, you know? Right. Just like an average, you know, average Catholic. Um, just want to avoid it. My mother said, okay, let's go. So we went there, and uh, I had him sign my book afterwards, and I said, I really would like to do what you do. And just was very intrigued by it. And he said, come see me in a few years. I waited about four years. And about, just after my 17th birthday, I had gone to one of their... They used to teach at their house. They ended up transferring to the Carousel Gardens a few years later. But I started getting taught at their house. And Ed used to you know, have me come over myself. I'd get dropped off by my mother. I didn't have a car until I was about 18 years old. So it was about a year later I didn't, that I didn't have a car. The whole year she had to drive me up there. But uh, as I'm learning from it and, you know, just uh, kind of progressing, you know, I'm, I'm getting involved with cases. Like I said, I was put right into a uh, case, the Meriden case, and that was pretty violent. Uh, there was another case, the Nilda case. This woman was being lifted up and just dropped on her head. Uh, and and, and some, you saw some, this you know, in front of you. Hot stuff, and, and I'm like, what the heck is this, you know? So I'm reading and reading and reading, and I'm, I'm introduced to other people, too. So I'm introduced to Bishop Robert McKenna. And from uh, Our Lady of the Rosary Chapel in, in, in uh, Stephanie, Connecticut, and I was introduced to Father Ramakumaraswa Swami. I ended up working with Malachi Martin. So, I mean, I, I ended up working with all these people. It was kind of like a, it was a procession of these people. And I learned. I took from each one of these people, and, you know, now I'm where I am today. And it's been almost, what, 24 years? Wow. Amazing, amazing stuff. I mean, just that you'd see this stuff yourself. You know, personally, at the age of 43, I've, you know, I've seen a lot of haunted locations. I've run across a lot of things. If I go into a home and it's it tossing the woman around like a rag doll, I think I, I don't, I, I, that might be the end of my investigative life. Oh, you can't do that, though. Uh, yeah, I can. Really I easily. think it would be so, yeah, I would be so freaked out. I think I'd be done. <laughs> that just, you know, 
I know it's out there. I'm not saying it's not. I just yeah. don't know that I necessarily want to see it myself where somebody is being – A, because you know what it reminds me of, Dave, and I don't know if you're a parent. I'm, I'm a father of seven. And when my child is sick and there's nothing you can – 